Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Combouzier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. This session of our Oktoberfest Fall Mining Showcase will feature Aura Minerals. Aura Minerals is a gold and copper production company with numerous assets located throughout the Americas. It is also advancing several development stage projects. From the company, we have with us Rodrigo Barbosa, who's president and CEO. I'll note that if any attendees have questions to so just type them in using the Q&A link and we'll get to them at the end of the session. This presentation is also available on the conference website. And with that, I'll turn uh, it over to Rodrigo to guide us through the story. Thank you very much, Taylor, and good morning all that's watching us. Thank you for, for being here with us and to hear about our story. I have uh, a 10 minutes that I'll be going through five to eight slides. I'll jump some ones so that I will have at least five minutes for Q&A. So uh, before, uh, I had problem sharing here. Let me do it again. Hmm. It's not jumping. Okay. So before making any kind of decisions uh, of investments, please read our disclaimer or caution our statement. Um, Aura, it's a company, it's a new story in, uh, in TSX, actually we won number one of uh, best performance in TSX for the last three years, uh, and we are, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a turnaround story, a company that is, is close to 1 billion Canadian dollars as a market cap, a company that's paid this year close to 8.3% as a dividend payout, uh, we have a growth pipeline that I'm going to show to you, plans to double our production compared to what we produced uh, last year, coming from 204,000 ounces to over 400,000 ounces of production on a yearly basis by 2024. Uh, while we do all the growth pipeline, we also be reducing our cash costs, either by entering the higher grade mines, developing mines that has a lower, uh, a lower cash cost compared to what we have today, or increasing the capacity in, uh, in such as an Ernest Azul that will dilute the fixed cost. We are a, a diversified a multi asset. We have one operation in Brazil, gold operations. We have one gold operation in Honduras. We have one copper gold operations in Mexico, one gold operation in the United States, and gold projects to be developed, two of them in Brazil, one of them about to start construction, the other one to start construction by the end of next year, and the one in, in Colombia, which is a longer shot. Uh, we are also listed in Brazil, listed TSX in also in Brazil, which give us a unique advantage to access capital, not only in North America through TSX, but also in Brazil. And then we'll be able to raise either equity or debt under a very favorable conditions compared to uh, what we can see on the average of the industries. And I will go through a little bit more on that. Or is also supported by our EESG agenda. E, as I mentioned, we need to take care of employees before all the ESG agenda. So we are, have plenty of focus to understand what the impact of our decisions over the environment, over the community that we are sitting on and how we affect us, our employees. Uh, our strategy has been built over uh, three very strong pillars and this is not a rocket science. This is a very trivial, but our, what we've done in the last four years was exactly to reinforce these pillars. We have any company to grow needs to have a good portfolio of operations and growth pipeline, which we have, and we worked to do that. You can see on our MA that happened over the last three years. We have to have a strong balance sheet. That's exactly what we worked during the last three years, strengthening our balance sheet, either by having a negative net debt, but also strong capillarity and access capital in every country that we operate. And number three, have to have a good team and a business culture in order to make the right decisions and capital location, you understand who's meritocratic performance, how we push forward our operations into our best managed minds that we want to be uh, in the world. Uh, we are, as I mentioned to you, we are coming from 120,000 ounces of production by um, 2018. Last year, we produced 204,000 ounces. This year should be closer to 260 to 190,000 ounces. Uh, while um, next year, this year should be 260 to 290,000 ounces, next year closer to 300, and projects to be developed, which will put us above 400,000 ounces by 2024. In terms of countries, we produce in those three countries, very well distributed, 70% 70, gold, 23% of revenues come from copper, understanding that copper has increased significantly the price so that we should take a higher amount of our, our revenues and margins 
during this second half of the year. Just an example of what we're doing in management. Uh, Renz Azul is a mine that we restarted uh, three years ago and uh, implementing a, a better plan and a better execution with the decentralized decision-making process, pushing down the, 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 the most of the technical decisions to the site while, while corporate focus on capital location and talent management. We could significantly increase uh, the quality of the mine coming from a, a grade from 0.86% to 1.44. We understand better the metallurgy and we operate better the plant. So we increase the recovery rates by from 80% to 91 on copper, 57 to 78 on gold, uh, which will which drove us our cash cost by half. Uh, it was the same mine, it was the same plant, much a better plan, much better execution. So that's just an example of how, what we've been doing in Aura. In terms of growth and pipeline, um, our objective to, to reach over 400,000 ounces does not depend on any kind of new acquisition on M&As, it's only supported by the projects that we already have in our portfolio. Coming from 204,000 ounces last year, this year we have Gold Road, we just expanded Aranza Azul capacity by 30%. We are increasing recoveries and, and slightly also the grades in San Andres and better grades and also in EPP, which will drive our, our uh, uh, 2021 production to 260, 290,000 ounces. Next year, we have a higher grade coming in from Ernesto mine, the mine that we operate in Brazil. Uh, we start construction of Almas uh, from, uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, we should start uh, production by late next year or early 2022. And then we also have Matupá to be developed in all other expansions that is coming in for the current productions. I would also highlight uh, the, the quality of the projects that we have, uh, either Almas and we are now building a PEA of Matupá which should be released very soon. Uh, we have a very interesting internal rate of return and a very interesting a risk associated to the capex. When we we'll see almost, for example, we are going to invest close to seventy-five million dollars, while the NPV is above two hundred fifty million dollars. So, the risk associated with developing these assets compared to the upside you give us outstands uh, most of the projects that we have on the industry. Uh, we we are talking about a uh, fifty percent internal rate of return on leveraged, a hundred percent internal rate of return on almost for the whole life of mine. While the project is still very flexible in order to access upsides while we produce the cash flows. And Matupa, we are developing the PEA and should be releasing very soon and should is moving us in direction very similar to, to Almas as well. In terms of dividend yield, Aura is uh, the best dividend yield, uh, yield in the industry. We paid 8.3% of dividend yield this year. We have, as we have a negative net debt, access of cash, and our project has such a, a, a short-term payback, we continue to produce cash while we invest in expansion, which will maintain our uh, liquidity and our negative net debt very strong. That's why we approved dividend payout of 20% of EBITDA minus recurring capex. And when we have excess of cash and we have nothing better to do, we will distribute also to our shareholders. It's a company that although has a strong dividend yield and also uh, a strong cash flow growth, it's still discounted compared to our peers. Uh, we're talking about 45% discount compared to our peers on price per NAV, 47% discount compared to price per cash flows. And that's uh, using the peers that we already have, the per company that has production of 400, 500,000 ounces. And we know that if we reach about five or 600,000 ounces plus stronger daily trading volume above $6 million per day, we can change the peers and move a couple of multiples ahead of what we have today. That's our objective. Today we have four, we know how to get to 400,000 ounces of production per year. Uh, we are two or $3 million daily trading volume. So we will try to access a higher uh, liquidity in this uh, market and also uh, a higher production. And that will go through M&A if we find the right opportunities. In terms of uh, our shareholder structure, we have uh, our main shareholders, Northwestern Enterprises, which is Paulo Brito, is the same founder also of Yamana, very connected to the sector and one of the, the most, the highest entrepreneurs on mining uh, in the Americas, uh, having many different assets and gold and copper is through uh, Aura Minerals. In terms of share performance, uh, last time we did that was uh, 800 uh, percent of appreciation 2020. If you look the last three years, it's above 12, 1,200, which gave us number one in share performance in the whole TSX. 
Uh, we also has we also have been significantly recognized in Brazil, either by the Valor, the major newspaper uh, on business in Brazil, and also Brazil Mineral, awarding uh, important uh, 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 awards for for us, uh, recognizing all the the good work that we are doing in either ESG, but also uh, with the investors relations and also capital appreciation. All in all. So Aura is a billion dollar company that uh, some of you have not heard about. It was number one performance in TSX, number one dividend payout, negative net debt with the plans to double production in the next uh, uh, three years. Why we also be combining with a cash cost reduction uh, and also uh, uh, looking for alternatives for a potential re-rating that we know that above 600,000 ounces and $6 million of day trading volume, we can also change our peers. So although discounted to the current peers, we can we want also to change our peers so that we have a, 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 a better appreciation uh, down the road. So on that, I hope I, yes, met the time. So I'll open for uh, Q and A. Perfect, thank you very much Rodrigo for the presentation. Uh, so we, uh, have time now for some questions. So please submit them using the Q&A link. Um, to start off, um, you know, you, you put out your preliminary uh, production uh, not too long ago for the, the third quarter. Um, you know, overall, it was, it was still strong, though there were some challenges at some of the operations. Um, do, do you expect the, uh, the, the, the strong performance at Aranzazu to, to continue uh, going forward? Yes, uh, we we actually in Aranza Zone the quarter we produce close to twenty six thousand ounces. Uh, while the only in September uh, we produce over ten thousand ounces. So what we're happening we increase capacity in Aranza by thirty percent. That was completed by June this year. So now we are on the high high capacity and since September also increasing the grades, which we should see these grades coming in also during the fourth quarter and also next year. So we should see stronger production from Aranzazu in the fourth quarter. And also we'll have the same in Honduras because Honduras, uh, we halt the production for three weeks during early this, uh, this quarter, last quarter. And now we don't expect, to, we expect to operate fully during the last quarter. Great, okay. And then uh, at the EPP uh, complex, you are expecting the, uh, the, the, the better grades to be hit uh, this, uh, in, in Q4 uh, following kind of uh, an impact from some rains uh, last quarter, correct? Correct. So we accessed uh, Ernesto Pist from last quarter of last year, uh, higher grades. So during this year, we are doing a pushback on the pit so that we can access back this higher grade during the, the, second, uh, the, the second half of this year. We had some delays and some of these delays has pushed also to the fourth quarter. So during the first quarter, we should see a gradual increase in grades although uh, probably not significant, but we'll see a gradual recovery in grades on the fourth quarter and then more next year. Great, okay. Uh, we have a question here. Uh, what markets do you think will improve your trading liquidity? Uh, London, uh, is that an option? Uh, before a dual listing in, in Brazil, we assessed the market, we analyzed London, New York and Brazil uh, to do a re-IPO of the company and also Toronto. We saw in Brazil a very strong and depth, depth in the equity capital market and also debt capital market. That's why we chose. London can be very interesting, but mostly for a company that's bigger than us, a multi-billion dollar. So is New York. So we are analyzing both, either New York or London, in order to move and increase daily trading volume. But that probably needs to be combined with uh, uh, issues of new shares. As we don't need capital right now, uh, we will wait until the right opportunity in order to make that decision. Okay, excellent. Um, so we are uh, just about out of time. Um, so, you know, maybe very quickly, you know, uh, what, what is the, uh, the development timeline for, for Almas and the, the construction start there? How does that look? Uh, Almas, uh, all the project engineering, it's in place. Environmental license is always uh, also uh, in place. What we need to finish, it's a final negotiation with the state of Tocantins, which is the owner of the land on the surface. So we are negotiating some extra uh, uh, benefits to the local communities and also to the state in order to start the construction. It should take uh, one or two months in order to, to finish so that we want to start 
uh, the construction by until the end of this year. Okay, perfect. So with that, we are out of time. So thank you very much, Rodrigo, for presenting Aura Minerals. And up next, we have Pasfino Gold. Thank you very much. And thank you for all for watching this.